Hello guys, welcome to Pirated Rum Diaries. Thanks for joining me on my second episode of this little segment of mine where I review rum and I also tell you stories of my mess ups from back in the day. You know, times I messed up in flames or relationships, etc. So, this is Plantation Rum, what we're going to review today. This is the rum that introduced me to rum. I have never had this because this is the infused version with pineapple. So, um, it's got one of those corks I like. Again, it's got like a, but I guess it's a sign of quality rather than just wood. It's got a plastic on top of the wooden cork. So, It tastes nice. It's one of those things with just a bit of ice, you could just drink this all by itself. Um, I can definitely see the hint of the pineapple. It is quite strong. I'm not going to use my homemade ginger today. I'm going to use this normal Jamaican ginger. Uh, okay, it's got the normal potency that I like from Plantation, which is what made me fall in love with the brand and the rum. I don't know how many years this has been out, the pineapple um, infused one, but it's the lick. Now guys, we're going to go on to our story. Um, let me just have a little bit of this before we start. So, so back at university, um, once I was at the student union club called the PAV. The PAV was like the, the club on the campus that everyone went to. This one night, the night had finished, um, there was a barmaid giving out sweets by the exit and was like, thank you, come again type of thing. And she was dressed as Wonder Woman. Not with the hot, not with the um, hot pants, because I'm, I'm mini, some like a little shorts she had on. And she had a t-shirt tied up. The most distinctive thing about her was her, um, her expression. It was very badass. Like she wasn't smiling. She could tell by her face she played no games. I liked that. So I thought I'm going to try and talk to her, get attention, childishly. I went, asked for a sweet, I got one. Asked another one, she gave me one, but she didn't give me no quarter. She didn't look at me, she didn't smile. Just like, take your sweet and get off. So I was, I liked that for some reason. Um, so I leave, get out, forget it, just thought she's not interested. A week later, I'm at home and a friend invited me to a house party. So I think I've got nothing to do, so I go, I go there. Go to this house party. And it's, it's fun, but it's a bit of a sausage fest, just guys. So we're talking, chit-chatting, and next thing you know, some girls walk in. And guess who's with them? Wonder Woman. I spend about an hour trying to summon the courage. So eventually I'm like, you know, forget this, I'm just going to go for it. So I tap her, and she turns around. And I was like, Did you, do you work at the path? Before I could finish that sentence, she goes, you were at the path. And you know that feeling, you know, when you get, when you, you like someone and you think, do they even know I exist? And then you realize that when you talk to them, that not only do they know you exist, but they possibly have thoughts about you as well. And it's a good feeling. So I was like, wow. So we sat talking, it's going nicely and stuff. And then um, she's playing with the hair. I'm thinking, okay, right, the vibes are there. So my friend is like, okay, we need to go. Time's gone, I'm up in the morning. So a week after that, I think we arrange a date and then we go to uh, we go out to eat in town. After that, we jumped in a taxi. I went to mine and then the taxi took her back to hers. We kissed and that was it. So we arranged a second date. I thought it would be a good idea because I was back, you know, I was doing media performance and I thought, okay, right, I've got this play and I'm, would you like to come and watch it? And she says, yeah, so she comes to my play and I was performing and the cool thing was when I was performing, I could see her, you know, watching. And at one point, I saw her glancing, and she smiled. I smiled, at her, and I had that feeling, almost like the, the proud boyfriend type of thing. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's my, that's my girl, and she, she, I'm a man, and she's watching me perform, do my thing. So that was kind of cool and kind of like naive. And but anyway, the play finished. She came, she gave me a kiss, and we went down to to, to a pub on campus. Uh, Two hours later, she has to go. Um, walked to the car park, I read another date. And fast forward to the third day. 
Date number three. In my head now, we're a couple. It's all going well. So she comes to mind. Um, I cook for her. I think I cook for a pasta. That's the only thing I could probably cook back then. And I remember there's a point where we're talking and we, we start kissing a little bit. And I think, oh, I'm trying to be all sexy and stuff. I try to nibble her cheek. And I bite a bit too hard. She pulls away. And I'm like, oh my God, I see her face. It's all like bruised. And she's like, oh my God, is my face okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. But she, she went and looked at something and she's like, oh my God, my face is like red. So I was like thinking, oh, yeah, what the hell are you doing? So we move on. Um, she kind of like left that slide. And then we finished eating. I'm like, would you like to watch a film? She's like, yes. So we, so we go upstairs to my room. Uh, she picks a film. So I'm going to tell you guys now. Netflix and chill, a woman you really like, you want to hang out with, you're hanging out with, someone you want to have a relationship with, do not, a first date, do not watch Alfie. Because why? Alfie's actually a bastard. Women should hate him, rightfully so. And she did. So watching Alfie, she's like, this guy's a dick, this guy's this. And I just noticed like, uh, this position changes and I'm like, oh my God. We go finishes and she's like um, okay I'm gonna go so I'm like go it's just like the party just died so anyway I walk her downstairs and she gives me a peck and she goes so I go back to my, my room and I'm mute I'm like what went wrong there what could have happened because third day in my in my mind we were already a couple and this is like you know we were meant to like but I was thinking I like her so whatever but I just felt like that vibe that something went wrong. So I'm in my bed and I look to the top, to my left, of my bed and I see a whip. Rewind uh, to that summer. We were in summer break, New Key, and uh, at the end of the night, I see this whip on a caravan site and I pick it up and I'm freaking running around with it. I take it back home and I decided that it would be a good idea to have it hung in my room by my bed. It wasn't a good idea. I've already bitten her cheek. She walks into my room and she sees like a seven foot whip hanging over my bed. What do you think was going through her head? She must have thought, this guy is gonna tie me up and do some abominations to me. Forget that, I'm not, I'm not about that life. So um, after that, the text messages kind of subsided. One night I decide, I call her, I text her, I'm like, what are you doing? And she says she's out at the path. So I'm thinking, okay, right, you know what? I'll go meet her. Because the text messages have been flowing, this might be my opportunity to kind of like get in there and see her face to face. So I go to the path with my friend um, and she's there with her friend. She sees me and she's like, hey, you right? I'm gonna go there. So I'm like, Okay. So they're on the dance floor, there's a chair the, by the dance floor, she's sitting there with her friends talking and I'm just hovering over her and a friend is like, who's this guy? And I'm like to myself, who's this guy? I'm a man, that's who I am. And she's like, uh, yeah, he's just a friend. Oh. <clears throat> so at that point, I kind of thought, okay, right, take the hint now, AJ. So I just said to my friend, let's go. And that was it. From then on, every time I saw her, it was, hey, you right? Hey, bye, take it. Hey, okay, bye. You know, I think that was her telling me, goodbye, Joe, I'm not interested. Um, so that was it, the three yeah. things I've learned from that. One, don't watch out for you on a date. Two, know your audience. Don't have a seven foot whip hanging over your bed. People aren't into that kind of stuff. And if they are, they'll let you know. And if you're not sure that they are, Freaking hide it under the bed before they come in. All right? Three, very important. No one's attention is worth you feeling awkward for. So the way I was falling around the bar after she hadn't replied my messages, don't put yourself through that shit. If you're ever in a position where you feel uncomfortable, just leave because you have your pride at the end of the day. That's very important. You know, that allows you to sleep at night. Look yourself in the mirror, you know? Finally, the fourth point, which is not really a point of something I did wrong, but it's a point about scenario. If she were the Wonder Woman I thought she was, she would have said, what is that whip doing over your bed? And I would have been like, long story, I found this whip, 
blah 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 and she'll think okay maybe let's let's see what this whip can do she might have liked it she might have thought no whip isn't for me i might have thought whip isn't for me i'm gonna throw this whip in the bin which i did throw that whip in the bin because i thought you're not cop blocking me again <laughs> just like our rum here rum and pineapple it says on it it was discovered out of curiosity you gotta try stuff if you know you like badasses make sure the person really is a badass and not just masquerading as a badass try stuff because sometimes we try stuff and then we realize you know what i did like that you discover things that's it for me guys uh, if you do like the video please subscribe